Set nades. Are they practical? Do they really elevate your gameplay? Today, we not only answer this question, but we help you learn this tricky technique. So let's get right into it. So if you have landed on this video, it is almost certain that you have watched countless tutorials from players like ML7, CarQ, and maybe a few others. The problem is that some nades that they show are a bit impractical and the videos that these creators make are often very large and hard to digest. So much so that the creators themselves forget about the nades they have placed and fail to use them on stream. But let's talk about the reason that you should learn these set nades. Set nades are an extremely powerful engagement tool as well as an early round ultimate generator. Not many Anas actually know and remember these nades either, so it'll definitely get people's attention, whether it be in a sweaty comp game or in a tryout. They are very difficult to retain, however. So I plan on making several guides for set nades based off of map type. This video will pertain to the current 2CP maps that can be played. With that out of the way, let's get right into the good stuff. Disclaimer, I do not use the scope technique as much as I can. This is because it drastically slows down the placement of your crosshair to the correct nade spot, which leaves you very susceptible to death. I also recorded this with basic low settings on a 75% render scale. If you have any other questions, be sure to comment them below. To open up the series, you could just nade the spawn close here, but that isn't very consistent. If the enemy team has a Lucio, they will easily catch you out of position. You can instead force yourself into the corner of the island and aim down into the left of the dark rectangle and throw. For this nade, you want to go in the corner of spawn out of the left door. Then line up your crosshair on the black area below the scaffolding and finish throwing the grenade just to the left, avoiding the scaffolding. So for this next nade, you want to force yourself into the left corner of choke until you stop moving. Then you want to place your crosshair about in the middle of the scaffolding, then strafe to the right to clear it from your throw. For this next nade, you want to force yourself into the same corner in choke. You then will use the same scaffolding to set up your nade and move it to the right. I like to imagine that I am drawing a right triangle that you see here. This nade will definitely need some practice, but it is nice to have in your arsenal. The next nade requires you to first force yourself into a corner to the left of choke. You know you hit it when you stop moving. You then want to line yourself up with where the two square tiles meet with the red outline of the sidewalk. Then look at the top right corner of the rectangular tile, second to the right, and throw. For this nade, you are going to set yourself up the exact same as the last nade, but instead of looking at the rectangular panels, you will look at the lights. Look halfway through the light above the black separator and throw. To kick off Anubis, I actually really like this nade. First, break any pots that are left over so that you can force yourself into the corner. Then, aim at the bottom right hand corner of the second square down and then move to the left just a little bit and throw. For this nade, you are going to want to lodge yourself into this corner you see here. Then you are going to want to aim where you see the two brown dirt stains connect on the corner of the wall. From there, you still want to walk backwards until your reticle is at the same level as the top corner of the wall. This nade does take about 6 seconds to land. For this next nade, you will want to jump on these bags until you lodge yourself into the corner. You then want to place your crosshair in a place so that when you jump, it will locate itself right where both walls corners will meet. For this nade, you want to set yourself up by lodging yourself into the corner provided by the tree. 
Then you want to aim right above what I call the center of the big Chungus leaf and throw. The last nade for this map will hit the back right of point two. Start by lining yourself up with the black indent on the floor of the house. Then line yourself up with the corner of the second scaffolding spike and aim just a little bit up and to the left and throw. Over to Hanamura, we are again introducing a spawn nade. Set yourself up halfway in between the staircase's outline until you are stopped by the red wall. Then line up your crosshair to the right and just below the red roof and throw. This nade takes about six to seven seconds to drop. So take that into account when throwing the nade before the round starts. For this nade, set yourself up with the left corner of the van. Then line your crosshair up so that the bottom and left lines just barely don't touch the gray overhang and throw. Your crosshair is likely not the same as mine, but the idea is still the same. You will set yourself up the same way for this next nade. However, this time take your reticle and drag it to the left and then throw. I have known this nade for a while and have memorized the distance. Luckily, it isn't too far. This next nade is very tricky, but it is handy depending on your team's initial rollout from spawn. First, line yourself up in the middle of the pillar closer to choke. Then, aim up until you find the perfect spot as shown here. This one is hard to visualize, but I draw a triangle within my mind and throw at the vertex. The triangle is isosceles, but with practice, you'll figure it out. This last nade isn't exactly a set nade, but it is a nice nade to know as it gives enough height to scale a Reinhardt shield. Just line yourself up with the reticle just between the two little wooden squares and throw. If this video helped you, let me know in the comments below. If there is a teaching technique I could change for future set nade videos, let me know. If you did like the guide, please do give it a like and consider subscribing. I do stream over at twitch.tv slash padswagger every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4 p.m. EST if you have any additional questions. But until next time, guys, I've got a peace out and pads out. I'll see you in the next one.